Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to recap and explain a recently released vampire hunting horror action comedy film called Daylight. I write a movie synopsis on my blog and make videos out of it. Please follow it for more content like this. In the beginning, we see a guy named Bud who is officially a pool cleaner. Unofficially, he was a vampire hunter. To give you background in this world vampires are living amongst humans, and a secret organization called the Union is hunting them. There are few freelancers like Bud who are solo on this job. These guys make money by selling vampire fangs on the black market. Now Bud enters a house with a gun and sets a trap with a silver line. This was his trademark trap which always works. We see an old lady here who is actually a vampire. Bud fires at her. This ensures some cool fighting. The action scenes in this film are really awesome. One trait of these vampires was they could heal rapidly. In order to kill them one has to decapitate the head from the body. Finally, with some action, Bud does that. Just then another guy rushes in to attack, but he gets caught in the trap. His head decapitates as this trap always works. Bud removed the flanks from these two guys and left the house without much fuss. While fighting he had an injury where some of his blood got spilled and some vampire blood fell on Bud's body. As everyone knows vampires are night guys they can't stand sunlight. A vampire lady by the name of Audrey was torturing another vampire. There were five main groups of vampire southern, eastern, spider, uber, and juvenile who were fighting for supremacy. Audrey wanted to bring them all to fight the common enemy which is humans, but this guy was opposing this. Audrey buried him alive by pouring concrete on him. Bud returned to his house, he cleaned himself with a yellow substance. This substance cleanses the body of any traceable vampire blood. Later Bud picked up his daughter from her school and dropped her to his ex-wife Jocelyn. The relationship between Bud and Jocelyn were let us say not cordial. Jocelyn was tired of Bud's lies. She had decided to move to Florida as living in Lay was becoming expensive. Bud was not really helping with child support hints, she was running out of her options. Bud accepted his mistake and asked for one week time to arrange money. Jocelyn needed $10,000 for tuition fees and medical bills. Bud agreed to this amount. Deep down he knew that this money was difficult to arrange. Bud met his dealer Troy and tried to sell his francs, but the money he was offering was not much only $800. Vampire fangs were valued based on their age the oldest ones had huge value and the newest ones were cheap. Troy says the fangs Bud brought were new ones hence less money. Bud was desperate for money. Instead of fangs he sells his collectible guns and shoes for extra bucks. Later Audrey visits the same house in which Steve killed those vampires. She was visibly sad and angry as the vampire. Audrey's henchman smelled Steve's blood and Audrey gave the order of hunting Bud down. To make large money in the vampire hunting business one has to be in the union. Bud was in the union but got expelled from it due to his erratic behavior. He was a legend there for his erratic, reckless, rude, and arrogant behavior. Steve decides to take help from his close friend Big John who was once his buddy. He explained his situation to him and Big John sympathized with him. He took him to the Union headquarters, where we see Abraham Lincoln's portrait with two axes. This is the reference to the movie Abraham Lincoln the Vampire Hunter. The Union's president Ralph was not interested even in seeing Bud as his record was well known here. But out of respect for Big John, he accepted inducting Bud back. He gave him a day shift with a whole host of conditions. Bud was selling his fangs where one rookie guy Seth valued it. Even though it was from a new vampire, he valued it as an elder's. Bud was about to get good money for it, but his past dues at the union needed to be cleared first. After all deductions, he got less money, on the high side he had the job. Ralph assigned Seth as a buddy to Bud which made Seth freak out. 
He was a desk job person, not a field agent. He protested this, but Ralph was insistent. Ralph had contempt for Bud. He wanted to kick his ass early from here. For Sat to get a promotion, this was the price. Without any options, Seth agreed. The next day, Seth showed up at Bud's place in his tie and suit. Bud was clearly irritated by all this buddy thing. He says we are not attending a wedding of vampires, we are hunting them. This suit and tie won't work. To kill a vampire one needs a special kind of ammunition, as regular bullets take a lot of time. Garlic-coated wooden bullets were one thing that most hunters use. In his warehouse, Bud had a whole host of custom-designed weapons which impressed Seth. We see Audrey at Troy's pawn shop during the day. She had developed a sunscreen that allowed her to roam in sunlight. She attacks Troy and says in the good old days you humans used to worship us. Now you are hunting us. Soon it will change. She gives an option of joining her in exchange for life. Bud was smart he chose death over a lifelike vampire. But under torture, he gave up Bud's whereabouts. Bud and Seth were outside one abundant bowling arena. Bud understood fieldwork is not Seth's cup of tea, hence he asked him to stay put. He entered the building with a gun, killed three teenage vampires, and was about to remove their fangs when the fourth one suddenly attacked him from behind. Just then Ralph called Seth to check on any updates. He shouts at Seth for sitting in his car, as he wanted him to note all violations Bud would make. Seth entered the building. He started shaking in fear of seeing a real vampire for the first time, but screamed at him to pass on the shotgun. He somehow did that, and Bud killed the fourth vampire as well. He removed the fangs from all of them. Seeing all this, Seth vomited and pissed in his pants, as clearly he was not meant for fieldwork. Bud understood this. He dropped him to his house and gave him the yellow liquid to clean off. Later he saw Seth's diary where he had written all of his violations. Bud understood Ralph's plan. When Bud returned to his house, he had a new neighbor, Heather. He helps her to settle in. The next day, Bud confronts Seth about the dairy and says, if I hadn't broken those rules, we would be dead by now. Rules are just guidelines. If we follow them to letter, then we will be in the grave sooner than you think. These two now enter Troy's pawn shop, which was flooded with blood. Bud saw his name written in Troy's teeth. He understood someone is hunting him. He wanted to leave this place quietly, but Seth started insisting on reporting this to the Union. With no option available, Bud explains his position. He needed to earn $10,000 as early as possible, else Jocelyn will leave him with Paige. He asked Seth to delay the reporting by one day, to which Seth agreed. This evening, Bud saw a strange guy in Heather's house. She was arguing with him. The next day, these two were in a posh area. Apparently, this was the place Audrey was developing to grow her vampire empire. Here, another vampire hunting group called the Nazarian Brothers were also there, as they had got a tip that some elders are hiding there. Bud agrees to partner with them for 50 to 50 profit share. These four enter a house thinking only a few might be there, but it turns out it's a nest. There were at least 60 vampires. We see some really cool action scenes. These guys killed all vampires in all possible ways. After the carnage, Seth observed one thing. Vampires from all four groups were there. It was strange as they used to fight among themselves for supremacy. Someone had brought these guys together. Just then last hiding vampire escaped right during the day, which surprised the Nazarian brothers. To this Bud says someone is making a sunscreen that is allowing vampires to stay alive during light. As we know it's Audrey, it was her grand plan after all. Later Bud took Paige to her friend's birthday party. Here he got a call from Audrey who in no certain term threatened him. Bud quickly grabbed Paige and started driving off. He gave her a tablet and a headphone to play a racing game while he was trying to escape from Audrey's henchmen. Here the chase scene is awesome, heart pumping with brilliant speed. 
After some time, Paige understood what was going on. She helped her dad. Here Bud saw the same guy whom he saw at Heather's house. These two somehow reached home safely. But for their bad luck, Audrey was already there. She had Jocelyn in her custody. Seth was dead. Bud tries to explain everything to Jocelyn, but she dismissed it. But after seeing Audrey's flanks, she understood the reality. Bud shouts at Audrey to keep his family out of this, to which Audrey says you started all this. Audrey's men beat Bud heavily and knocked him out. Audrey left with Paige and Jocelyn. When Bud woke up, Seth was alive as well. They have converted him into a vampire, hence he was behaving strangely. Seth was shocked by this. He tried to control himself, but instinct forced him. As soon as he tried to attack Bud in rage, Bud decapitated his head from his body. But strangely, Seth was still alive. This was a new kind of vampire tribe that could sustain decapitation. Seth put his head back on his body, and it started healing. Here he was able to control his emotions, implying this tribe was more stable compared to others. Bud understood this. He was ready to work with Seth on the condition that he will not eat him. These two now enter Heather's house, and Bud was sure that she was the one who helped Audrey. Heather explains her position, she says. Audrey converted me against my will. If I disobeyed her, then she would have killed me. She is particularly angry with you as you killed her daughter. The old lady in that house was Audrey's daughter. Heather agreed to support Bud to take down Audrey. She gives some blood to Seth which heals his neck. Next, all these guys attack Audrey's base. They kill plenty of vampires. Just then Big John also arrived here. He started shooting with a machine gun and killed at least a hundred vampires. Audrey's base was underground. She was taking Paige and Jocelyn with her. Bud and Jan later attacked the sunscreen factory and killed many more vampires. By this time Audrey understood Bud is here and she was ready for him. Bud and John were going through a tunnel when suddenly a few vampires attacked them from behind. These two fought with them bravely but John got infected by one of them. He pushed Bud to another room and locked himself behind him. Later he revealed his chest bomb meaning we will go full kamikaze here. He supported Bud to the end. In the next room, Audrey's henchmen attacked Bud. Here Bud got help from Heather and Seth, who kept him busy. Finally, Bud was face to face with Audrey. He sneakily sets his trademark trap. Audrey and Bud started fighting here. Audrey was fast and strong. She easily knocked Bud down. As she was about to bite him, Jocelyn attacked her from behind and slowed her down. In the other room, these two killed this guy. Bud quickly attacked Audrey again. He fired at her, but nothing worked. Finally, he accepted his fate and was surrounded. He was ready for a bite from Audrey. Audrey ran toward him to bite, but to her shock, she got caught up in that trap and dies. Since she was an elder, decapitation means death. Bud removed her fangs as this will make him filthy rich. Everyone was safe except Big John. Bud got his hat and was indeed grateful to him for his sacrifice. Ralph met these guys outside and was about to fire Bud for violating a whole host of rules. Seth defended him by citing the extraordinary clause condition which gave a free hand to the hunter in certain cases. He ditches his promotion idea as he was liking this new field job. In the end, we see Big John coming up from a manhole. He was alive and surely will turn into a vampire. He says the last dialogue from the Lost Boys film. With this, the film ends. The film is great. Action scenes keep you hooked up. If you are a fan of action films, then this film is for you. It has a lot of comedic scenes as well. Overall a good, campy, dark comedic gore fest with a good story and strong potential for some sequel material. If you like my videos then please subscribe to my channel. Check out my blog. Thanks for watching.
Take care.